I'm Danny, and this is Asha. We're two Kiwis who, after five years living in London, decided to head home the slow way. We bought a 36-foot sailing boat, Bacchus, built a little rowing and sailing dinghy, Piwaka Waka, and headed towards the horizon. These are our adventures. On our last episode, we arrived to the turquoise waters of the beautiful island of Barbados after 19 very long days sailing across the Atlantic Ocean. We're off to check into immigration. Hopefully they give us a nice stamp on our passport and we can go and get ourselves a rum punch. So we've just crossed the border into sunny Barbados. That was the friendliest immigration post I've ever dealt with. Yeah. All you cruisers out there on a budget, mm. no Come fees to, to get in here. Come to Barbados, no yeah. fees. Yeah, let's go check it out. Just stumbled across the party. <laughs> got a few friends down here on the beach. <laughs> okay. Let's go join the party. Welcome, welcome to the Caribbean. We were pretty stoked that Barbados had put a welcoming party on for us. We found the rum punch, the chicken wings and the local beers and settled in to watch the sunset from solid ground for once. Absolutely shattered from our voyage, we spent the first few days just playing with our toys, snorkeling and generally giving each other some well deserved space. I feel like one of those uh, super yachts. I've got all our toys out. Ben's been flying the drone. Danny's off paddle boarding. Now Ben's taking the dinghy for a hoon. It's my two rapscallion crew. Out oh, having a play in the sun. How you doing, buddy? After a few days of R&R, our friend Katie joined us and we were ready to start exploring this island properly. What are we doing today, Asha? We've hired a car and um, we're going to go and check out a bit more of the island of Barbados uh, that we're not really able to see on foot. Uh, so we're up on the very northern tip of the island now, so we actually sailed in past here. Um, uh, when we came in from, uh, from the Canaries, it's a pretty inhospitable coast. A lot more wild than where we're anchored at the moment, that's for sure. Yeah. But it's cool, it's nice to be um, exploring on land instead of on the sea. Fantastic, thank, thank you. you. Me through, what have you got guys? We've got some spicy pork chops. We've got a few plates of marlin going on. We're sitting in... I've got the marlin here. Good, no, you've not mentioned the most important ingredient. The macaroni Mac pie. pie. Macaroni pie. You can't, you can't rush this. Hot sauce is very important. Okay, <laughs> mm. It's mm. what dreams are made of. Really good. So with full tummies we headed towards Frights Bay at the bottom of the island for an afternoon cool down. Ooh, ooh, those are hot. What are you doing, Katie? Turtle spotting. <laughs> the turtles are bountiful but shy and pretty small so they're hard to see on the camera. But there is one here if you look really carefully. There they are. Having a bit of sunset cub on the beach. Yeah. 
these are our new German friends. They also have a sailing boat and we're going to build a bonfire on the beach. This is Ilya. Hello. So today uh, New Zealand lose. Yeah. Uh, I would say New Zealand zero, Germany one. New Zealand always loves a comeback though, so <laughs> we're having round two very shortly. We spent the night on the beach with Sailing Tula and another Danish boat that was in the bay, toasting marshmallows and telling sea stories. The following day we were back on foot, exploring the local area of Spice Town. So in the Caribbean they've got these trees called manchil, I think it's pronounced, and they're really really toxic and what they do is they paint a red stripe around the trunks to warn you, um, but the leaves are toxic, the apples that grow on them are really toxic and the sap will cause your skin to blister, so you're not allowed to stand under them when it rains. The indigenous people used to use the sap and the apples to poison um, arrows and blow darts and whatnot. Um, but the tree is everywhere, it grows all along the coast and it's quite important uh, for holding the coast together a little bit like the, the tussocks and the New Zealand sand dunes. Um, so yeah, something to, uh, something to watch out for. It turns out it wasn't just the Manchil trees that were a hazard in our picturesque little spice town. We also managed to stumble across an abandoned resort. This one's still got the glass. Yeah. So this is like an abandoned resort on the beach in Barbados. Um, and I think it was open not that long ago because there's signs telling guests that the lift's going to be out of order until 2018. So it's not long abandoned, but it's been pretty thoroughly looted. Beach day for us in Barbados. It's really hot, so we've jumped off Bacchus. Um, we've come to find some shade uh, near uh, Fritztown, I think it is. So, yeah, hanging out here on the beach. Lovely. Katie's last day on the island, we kept ourselves cool, chucking some balls around at the beach. Sadly, though, Katie was not the only one we were about to say goodbye to as it was time for our build fun to head back to reality. So this is it Ben? You're saying goodbye? I am. How do you feel? I feel like I've forgotten what the real world's like because I've been on backers for about six weeks. So yeah, I'm very confused and very emotional. <laughs> <laughs> and I'll miss you guys and it's been such a great trip. And thanks so much for having me. Oh, stop. We'll miss awesome. you too, Ben. What are you looking forward to going home to? Um, I don't know, just uh, yeah, just everything being a little bit easier. But it's mostly, you know, when you're at anchor here in Barbados, it's, it's lovely being on a boat. You don't miss anything, really. Yeah. It's just nice to have, come have a proper shower every now and then, and that's about it. Yeah. And what about, what will you miss from Bacchus? 
Well, I missed from Bacchus. Um, probably just waking up and hanging out with you guys, having a coffee in the morning. <laughs> oh no, being able to jump straight off the boat in the morning um, when you've got a bit of a hangover, that's nice. Alright, well, you've been a good crewmate, so you'll be welcome back any time. Kathy, Kathy, go me here shortly, okay? Kathy's yeah. going to be here shortly, you know If you bilge pump, if you bilge, bilge is ever needed, needed pumping, you know where to find me. <laughs> So everyone's leaving today. Um, the Danes are hitting the road and the two German boats that we've been hanging out with are uh, hitting the road as well. We'll see you there. Have fun. Uh, Ciao. <laughs> Have a good passage. Yes, thank you also. Yeah, we'll see you in St. Lucia. Yeah, I hope so. Very good. Bye. See ya. So after two and a half weeks in Barbados, that's it disappearing off behind me in the background. Had a great time, absolutely loved it, but everyone's left the anchorage and it's time for us to as well. So we're heading to the Grenadines, to Betquia, um, and we're pretty excited. So it's just an overnighter, just about 100 miles I think. Um, we should get there some stage tomorrow before lunchtime hopefully. Um, it should be quite a nice sail, we've just got the wind behind us, a little bit of a roll on. Um, but Flo's driving and we've got the sails wing on wing so it should be nice, nice night. Arr, we're in Captain Jack Sparrow territory now. This is the island of Bequia. And I'm sure Jack came here at some point in his career. I know lots of other pirates did. Yes. Oh. So we arrived in Betway, the most northern island of the Grenadines, and got to work exploring. There was a fantastic walking path that took us from our anchorage into town which made life pretty easy for us. The town itself was cute as a button with everything we needed. Big Bay is one of the few places where whaling is still allowed. They do however limit it to four humpbacks a year and can only use traditional hunting methods of hand-thrown harpoons on small open sailboats. So the limit is really near. And we spent our days walking the length and breadth of the island in search of the best beaches and of course the best view. There was a pretty nice community of yachts to keep us entertained also. So we've been having some trouble with our engine, it's been overheating um, and I haven't been able to work out what the problem is. Uh, but I've pulled the fresh water pump off the engine today uh, and inside it's really grotty. There's heaps of build up of like, I don't know, some sort of calcium crusty stuff. Um, so I think uh, that is probably not helping the situation. Um, and I've changed the thermostat as well because uh, that was misbehaving. Now normally when you put these things back together, this backing plate would go onto the pump and then the whole assembly would go onto the engine and there's a paper gasket that goes around there to help it seal. Uh, we can't find uh, an off-the-shelf gasket though, so I'm having to make my own. Um, and I've been told that old nautical charts, if they were printed on waterproof paper, make really good gasket material. So, how to make a gasket in the Caribbean. Smear marmite uh, over the backing plate um, around where the old gasket was. 
we can't actually use the old gasket as a template because it's uh, fallen to bits. That's why we've used the Marmite. Face down on some uh, good sketching paper and you end up with a Marmitey outline which you can then cut out. And voila, you have a template for your new gasket. So then I'm going to find an old chart that we no longer need, probably one from Europe which is printed on waterproof paper, and I will sacrifice a corner of the chart and cut out a new gasket, uh, which can then go uh, between the pump assembly and the engine when I put it all back together again. So that's uh, my arts and crafts for the afternoon. Rudolph, where are we going? Ah, oh, this is so pretty. We're um, we're just walking out towards the uh, the western point of Betway. Uh, it's just it's so beautiful. Look at these colours. So it's nice. Amazing. We love it here. Yeah, paradise. What have you got? <laughs> got a piece of bamboo which <laughs> might just be our new uh, spinnaker pole to replace the boat hook. You might remember from a previous episode we've been using our boat hook as a substitute for our second spinnaker pole and it could break at any moment. So here in the Caribbean you can get your laundry delivered by boat. <laughs> it's fantastic. Yeah thank you. 105. Perfect. Thank you very much. Cheers. Nice clean sheets and towels. So I've uh, been working on Bacchus's engine. Um, I pulled the freshwater pump to pieces the other day uh, and fitted a new thermostat and just cleaned out a bit of uh, gunk that was in there because uh, I was worried that the engine was running too hot. Now we don't have a temperature gauge on our engine which is a little bit frustrating um, but I've been able to borrow a little uh, infrared thermometer off another yachty and so I'm just taking measurements now of the engine temperature uh, just at the head and at the thermostat pump um, and yeah we're just uh, we're just taking her out for a bit of a spin in the bay just to make sure that the engine's not overheating. That looks pretty good. Um, I'm hoping that it sits around um, 90 degrees and it's at 82 degrees, so it's really good. It's finally flat again in the water. It has had months and months of massive waves all the time rolling around, and now this is exactly what I like. It's just flat. Of course, there's not much wind, so we're not going to go anywhere very fast, but I can't wait for ourselves tomorrow. <laughs> so, tomorrow we're going to sail out. And uh, we're going to head south towards Tobago Keys, which we're quite excited about because it's a turtle sanctuary uh, in a national park. Um, but this is the coast of Betway that we're just going past at the moment, uh, just on our little test motor while we check the engine. It's quite hard to see on the camera, but in this bay up ahead, there's um, a settlement called Moonhole. And it was some alternative kind of commune thing, I think, that was set up. And um, there's all these buildings, and none of them have any glass in them, and I think people do live there. Um, yeah, but it's just sort of, it's this really remote little location on Betway. There's no road access, you can only get there by boat. On the road again, I can't wait to get on the road again. Where are we off to? What's we happening? are going to Tobago Cays, uh, which is another part turtles. of <laughs> the Grenadines. Um, yeah, and it has supposedly got a lot of turtles. It's just a reef with a couple of little islands in it, so it's no good if there's wind, but we have got not much wind, so it's going to be a slow sail, but hopefully it'll be a really nice anchorage when we get there. But we're a little bit sad to leave Betquay because it's been great here. Betquay has been just fantastic. Uh, I'll give you one last look at the beach because it's just so pretty. That's our little local bar in there called Jack's. We've been leaving our dinghy at their dinghy dock. And then there's a path that goes around the cliffs uh, into town. Uh, and it's just such a pretty little anchorage. Bye, Big Bay. Love you. Enjoy.
join us on our next episode as we swim with giant turtles and continue our exploration of the Windward Isles.